As soon as videotape left the factory, it already started to break down. Information that is on the tapes is slowly dying, and if we don't preserve them, important historical content that's contained on them will be lost forever. What is MEPOPS? What is MEPOPS? What is MEPOPS? MEPOPS stands for Moving Image Preservation of Puget Sound. What MEPOPS does for the general public of the Pacific Northwest is provide access to digitized content. Our mission is to raise awareness about the magnetic media crisis, the alarm that the Association of Moving Image Archivists sounded to sort of bring awareness to the urgency of digitizing videotape. Audiovisual Archive in Australia has put a deadline of 2025 to say if you don't have your magnetic material digitized by this time, you're, you're screwed. They're figuring out the actual date, and it's right around the corner. Within 20 to 30 years of the time it's created, it's, it's disintegrating. The magnetic media crisis is sometimes called a gathering storm because the deterioration of the actual analog videotapes and then the increasing obsolescence and rarity of the players that play them back. So video is a little bit different from film in that video went through all these different iterations, all these different formats for consumer purposes, for broadcast purposes, whereas film, there were consumer formats, 616 millimeter, 8 millimeter, but the principle of film has stayed pretty consistent and video requires all these different players. A lot of the formats that we work with stopped being manufactured years ago. And so we have to make sure that we take good care of them and tune them up, clean them, because a lot of the parts and players are getting harder and harder to come by, and so are the people who actually work on them. They're a dying breed, if you will. In some cases, people thought they were creating preservation copies by putting um, film onto videotape. In fact, that was that was not a great a great a great idea. Film is actually quite stable. The thing about older media types like film and negatives is that they are stable. Thirty years from now, you're going to be able to view them. Hundred year old nitrate film, in some cases, is still around and looks gorgeous. Rosie Video, for its manufacture, had a completely different different purpose. It was more of a kind of uh, democratizing um, format for shooting. It was a lot cheaper than film, so not only were professionals using it, but also amateurs and just the average person was able to buy videotape and record. There was plenty of access. You could watch your, your VHS tape of a film, but now that VHS tape needs a lot of help. We have to keep up. We can't just sort of settle back and say, okay, we're finished. Despite the fact that we're working with old materials that have their fixed content, the way we view that material, the way we store that material is going to just keep changing and evolving. A lot of the time, videotape is capturing real people doing real things. That might sound personal and boring, but it really encompasses so much of Seattle and Seattle's history that it's valuable to the general public and great for them to be able to access it. The public is able to see files digitized at MePops on Internet Archive where we create collections for each group so that they can, based on that institution, go in and view the content on their personal computer.
Strong, Northwest artist and instructor, is going to show us how he paints a watercolor using Chinese ink, mounted rice paper, Chinese brushes, and regular watercolors. The method of mounting the rice paper shown here is with a photographic dry mounting tissue. The tissue is placed over the cardboard backing. Next is the rice paper, then a protective sheet of newsprint. The heat from the hot iron, which is passed over the entire surface, branches, trees, rocks, and mountains. During this demonstration, he will refer to these exercises. The scene selected is James Island near the foot in the state of Washington. A rectangular viewfinder helps to compose the picture. Normally, this artist did not sketch with pencil first, but for this demonstration, an outline makes it easier for the viewer to follow. The variations of width and length of line bring out the character of the rough, rocky formation. Yellow ochre, mixed with Chinese ink, is applied to the mountain with a flat, chisel-pointed brush. held at a 45-degree angle. Hookers! A wide brush, dipped in clear water, wets the same manner. He writes the date and his name in Chinese. And applies his seal. All of these in the place he has left for them. For they too are an important part of the painting's composition. In its final form...
was the third year they have met here. And as the plan has it, they shall meet here once every year. Then he said, quit now. Now here always. <laughs> it's ridiculous, the sad waste time that stretches before and after. The whole world is our hospital, endowed by the ruined millionaire. Uh, this thing is sure. Time is no healer, and the patient's no longer here. It's like an underground train that's moved too long between stations. You're no longer the same person that left that station or who will arrive at any terminus. The first year they met, they spoke of the terrible loss of a moment in time not achieved. They held that it is that moment from which you live your life in regret or in peace. The second year, a rare romantic promise held in the future. This was Haven's topic, probably to lead them away from the potential sadness of John's topic the year before. They usually begin with talking about their present lives, and they can't help speaking of the two former discussions. But this time, they meet to discuss a topic of mutual fascination. Let us go then, you and I, when the evening is spread out against the sky like a patient etherized upon a table. Boy. Let us go through certain half-deserted streets, the muttering retreats of restless nights in one-night cheap hotels. Now that lilacs are in bloom, she has a bowl of lilacs in her room and twists one in her pink and thousand tails. I know the voice is dying with the dying fall, beneath the music of a farther room. They called me the hyacinth girl. She turned away. But with the autumn weather compelled my imagination many days, many days and many hours. Her hair over her arms and her arms full of flowers, yet when we came back late from the hyacinth garden, your arms full and your hair wet, I could not speak. And now there's no end of it, the voiceless wailing, no end to the withering of withered flowers, to the movement of pain that is painless in motion, to the drift of the sea and the drifting wreckage. Would it have been worth it after all? After the cups, the marmalade, the tea among the porcelain, among some talk of you and me, would it have been worthwhile to have bitten off the matter with a smile, to squeeze the universe into a ball to roll it towards some overwhelming question to say I am Lazarus come from the dead come back to tell you all I shall tell you all if one settling a pillow by her head should say that is not what I meant at all that's not it at all and would it have been worth it after all would it have been worthwhile after the sunsets in the dooryards and the sprinkled streets after the novels after the teacups after the skirts that trail along the floor, and this and so much more. It's impossible to say just what I mean. But as if a magic lantern threw the nerves in patterns on a screen, would it have been worthwhile if one, settling a pillow or throwing off a shawl and turning toward the window should say, that is not it at all. That's not what I meant at all. John, John, hey. For most of us, there is only the unattended moment, the moment in and out of time. We had the experience, but we missed the meaning. The distraction fit, lost in a shaft of sunlight, the, the wild time unseen, or winter lightning, like a river with its cargo of dead Negroes, cows, and chicken coops. Kirsten, you come back here apple. now. I bite in the apple. Where is there an end to the drifting wreckage, the prayer of the bone on the beach, the unprayable prayer between midnight and dawn when the past is all deception, the future futureless, before the morning watch, when time stops and time is never ending? <laughs> summer midnight, you can hear the music, and seeing that it was a soft October night. Madame Sostris, famous clairvoyant, had a bad cold. Nevertheless, is known to be the wisest woman in Europe with a wicked pack of cards. Here is your card. 
the drowned Phoenician sailor stows her pearls that were his own. Look, here's Belladonna, the lady of the rocks, the lady of situation. And here is the man with three stays, and here the wheel, and here the one-eyed merchant. And this card, which is blank, is something he's carrying on his back, which I am forbidden to see. I do not find the hanging man. Fear death by water. I see crowds of people, the Antarctic, and fright. What might have been and what has been point to one end which is always present. There were times we regretted the summer palaces on slopes, the terraces, and the silken girls bringing sherbet. Gloomy Orion and the dog are veiled in hushed to shrunken seas. And the dead tree gives no shelter, the cricket no relief, and the dry stone no sound of water. Only there is shadow under this red rock. Come in under the shadow of this red rock. And I will show you something different from either your shadow of morning striding behind you or your shadow at evening rising to meet you. I will show you fear in a handful of dust. I will show you fear in a handful of dust. Sweet Thames, run softly till I end my song. Sweet Thames, run softly, for I speak not loud or long. But at my back in a cold blast I hear the rattle of the bones and chuckle spread ear to ear. Rattle his bones over the stones, only a pauper nobody owns. Rattle his bones. Over the stones, only a pauper nobody owns. Oh, <laughs> unreal city. What is that noise? The wind under the door. What is that noise now? What is the wind doing? Nothing. Again, nothing. You know nothing. Do you see nothing? Do you remember nothing? I remember. Those were pearls that were his eyes. The whisper of running streams and winter lightning. The wild thyme unseen and the wild strawberry. Oh, the laughter in the garden. And the pool was filled with water out of sunlight, and the lotus rose, quiet, quiet. The surface glittered out of heart of light, and they were behind us, reflected in a pool. Then a cloud passed, and the pool was empty. Go, said the bird, for the leaves were full of children. And behold, the heavens opened, and there stood a white horse. Hey, who's the third one that walks always beside you? Oh, I know when, when I count, there's just you and I together, but when I look ahead, up the white road, well, there's always another one walking beside you, gliding, wrapped in a brown mantle, hooded. Stimulated by the account of one of the Antarctic expeditions, it was related that a party of explorers at the extremity of their strength had the constant delusion that there was one more member than could actually be counted. Into the stillness between two waves of the sea, the present suspended in time. 
They usually begin with talking about their present lives, and they can't help speaking of the two former discussions. But this time, they meet to discuss a topic of mutual fascination. That all time is the same moment, and that a presence is here to guide us to that understanding. But we fear that presence and call it the supernatural.
We can be more than two faces. The summer grass to bring us back to the underground.